Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, just doing a little bit of an update, uh, it's a sit and talk instead of a, a, a walk and talk. So there's just a few things I wanted to talk about, a little bit of ministry update. But uh, the first thing is, is the, I put down my notes, thumbs up, thumbs down. Now the Bible says God's not a respecter of persons and we're not supposed to be a respecter of persons. Uh, you know, if a person does right, give them the credit. If they do wrong, call them out for doing wrong. We're not supposed to be a respecter of persons. Now, I failed this, and I was a respecter of persons to some people. Uh, we're not supposed to be a respecter of persons. We're not supposed to hold anybody above this right here. Okay. But getting back to the subject for, for YouTube or um, Rumble. I use the platform Rumble, too. Um, I still have my fans on both sides. My, I have people that the video, I, I put an hour to two hour Bible study out, and I get brethren or just false converts, they'll give me a thumbs down within five minutes of the video, or I'll get a thumbs up within five minutes of the video. And some that God put on my heart to challenge anybody that's watching these videos is that you don't have to, but just a little challenge that if you do give it a thumbs down or you do give it a thumbs up in a, in a short sentence to a, a, a little bit of a, like a paragraph that has like two or three little short sentences, you know, if you gave it a thumbs down, explain why you gave it a thumbs down. I'm not here to try to push for more thumbs ups and thumbs downs. I mean, Brother Says Christ, God works in His way and in His time. And I've come across videos that God wanted me to see it I don't know why it came up. It, because of the algorithm and everything, it shouldn't have come up. My videos have popped up. I'm not, you look at my channel, I'm not famous, you know, uh, well-renowned. My videos don't get, uh, you know, a thousand thumbs up. I'd be blessed to get, um, you know, anywhere between one to ten thumbs ups, and that's it, you know. And, they, and the whole point of that real quick is the thumbs up. They try to say the more thumbs up you get, the more your video will circulate and pop up on other people's screens and all that. And it's like, if God, if that person's truly seeking truth and God wants to use you, if you're a brother in ministry using YouTube, if God really wants to use you, your, one of your videos will pop up as a recommendation, regardless of their so-called algorithm. This talk is just that if you give a thumbs up, you know, throw in, throw in there, say, you know, I thank God for this teaching. It helped me here. I was able to apply this to my heart because we're, we're talking about this. I got the study for tomorrow we're going to get out about the greatest, what is the greatest commandment of all? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Those four things. And the first one we're going to hit on is heart. I got that. But how that these teachings are hitting your heart. You're able to take God's Word, hide it in your heart, and it's helping you with your walk with the Lord. It's helping you not get distracted by the world or how you're dealing with the world, dealing with your own life, your own struggles with the flesh. Okay? It, it's a good encouragement. We did studies here. The Lord blessed me with studies uh, trying to push exhortation on the brethren. Okay? Uh, take time to exhort one another when they're doing good or they're trying to do... men that are trying to do work for the Lord... Um, you know, it's good to exhort them by, and the best way you do it is by showing that their teaching's not in vain, that the work that we're doing is not in vain. So, like I said, it's a challenge now for the the people that are enemies, or if you're a brother in Christ that simply disagrees, and you just give it a quick thumbs down. It's just a little bit of a challenge and a request to put in the comment section why you gave it a thumbs down, and see, and please do it within a paragraph, okay? Um, which brings to the second point here is there's times where I, it's very rare, but I'll get a 50-page essay in the comment section, okay? I'm exaggerating a little bit, but what I'm saying is, is I have to scroll down, and it just seems to go on forever. And it's a disagreement. Even if it was an agreement or a disagreement, you know, if you want to talk, okay, I, I, I've never turned down somebody yet for the first time or the second time. If I've already talked to, to somebody, whether they're trying to push, there's no such thing as eternal security, there's no such thing as dispensational teaching, there's no such thing as um, the, the day of Christ, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. It's post-trib. I've dealt with post-tribbers more than anything. Where I've talked with them two sessions of like an hour or two apiece, where we're going through the scriptures and I'm trying to show them from the scriptures that the body of Christ will not be here in the time of Jacob's trouble. And they always keep running back to Matthew 24, 
Mark 13, I think it is. I know Matthew 24, but um, 23, 24, 25, it's like talking about the kingdom of heaven. And so is the parallel passage in Mark, the Sermon on the Mount. The parallel passage in Mark and Luke, it's, uh, it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And we're not under the kingdom of heaven gospel. We're under the, the spiritual, we're under the time of the Gentiles where the Gentiles can now get adopted in and a Jew and a Gentile can get saved. Anybody can get saved today. But we're under the gospel, the dispensation, Paul talks about the dispensation of the grace that's given to me to you word. Okay, we're under that dispensation, the, the, the gospel that Paul preaches. We're not under the gospel of the kingdom of heaven that John the Baptist was preaching and then Jesus started preaching after John the Baptist when Jesus said that salvation is only at the Jews. But anyway, I talk with them and I give them a chance. If you really want to talk, I've, I've always hooked up on, there's, I've got Skype and I've got va Facebook Messenger. After my daughter passed away, I thought of giving up Facebook. I still kind of tend to think of giving up Facebook, but every once in a while it comes up being needed to fellowship with a brother or sister in Christ. Okay? But all I'm saying is, is I'm not really into trying to set there in my eyes. I, I try to read this. This is where I spend my time reading when I start getting headaches because my eyesight's not the best. People have caught me where I'm trying to read. It's like I'm missing something. I'm trying to look. I print out bigger lettering for my notes. Um, but the point is, is if you want to do that, do it in an email. And even in an email, if you're going to email me, it's just a request. I'll still try to read it. If it's a 50-page essay, I'll try to get through it. But chances are... I. If you really want to have an in-depth discussion about any subject in the Bible where you believe I'm right, or you believe, well, like I said, I'm never right. Remember that saying, this, God's perfect written word, the King James Bible, this is always right. And when I'm wrong, just remember, this is always right. Okay? I can be wrong, I'm fallible. Okay? It's almost like the two rules. I know I'm, I'm amending it. It used to be rule number one, I'm always right. Rule number two, if I'm wrong, refer to rule number one. Well, here it's rule number one, the King James Bible in English, God's perfect written word in English. This is perfect and is always right. And rule number two, if I'm wrong, refer to rule number one. This is always right. Okay. I make mistakes sometimes. Okay. But if you want to discuss something in a little bit more in depth, I've got those two platforms. I've even downloaded once. I, I don't have it anymore, but there was this other platform I've never even heard of where you can do video chat. And I chatted with some people way back in the day about Bible issues, stuff about the Bible. So even if you agree with me and you want to talk, I'm here. If you disagree with me on something and you really want to try to reach me for the truth because you believe I'm wrong, uh, you remember what the Bible says, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Okay? I'm, I've got an open door policy for first, the Bible says the first and second admonition reject. Some people misuse that. Okay, I've had brethren kick me to the curb and they've never admonished me once or even twice. Well, I made a video disagreeing with you. That's not the same thing. If you want to admonish me, okay, then that's a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, then I'll give you a first and second admonition. They got, one of the young men that I talked to about post-trim, he said, it when we got to our second session, he said, well, the Bible says after the first and second admonition, reject. And I said, amen. That's exactly what the Bible says. We've talked twice. I've showed you the truth. You're not rightly. He didn't believe in dispensational teaching. Whenever he would get in the Pauline epistles, or you start grabbing Revelation, showing that in Revelation, that the body of Christ, people that are in Christ Jesus, they're not there. How Hebrews is written to Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, and so on in James, and, and then first, second, and third Peter, or first and second Peter. Uh, first Peter, it starts out with today, but by the time you get to the end of second Peter, he's talking about the new heaven and who earth. He goes through this dispensation, time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, and then God, at the end of the day of the Lord, God destroys the world and gives a new heaven and new earth. It goes through a lot of dispensations in first and second Peter, so you've got to be careful. But anytime I brought him to the Pauline epistles, it was for today showing that we don't go through the time of Jacob's trouble because what the Pauline epistles show goes that, uh, when he kept trying to grab from another dispensation, he kept going back to the Gospels. He kept running back to the Gospels. Matthew 24, Matthew 24. It's like, that's before Jesus even died. Okay, that's not the Gospel for today. The Kingdom of Heaven is not for today. But even after all that, we talked and we went our separate ways. I wasn't mean, he wasn't mean. 
And I'm not saying that makes everything right. I wish he would have come to the knowledge of the truth. And on his side, he probably wishes I would have believed post-trib, which I, I won't do. Amen. But I have never turned down talking about the Word of God with somebody the first and second time. Talking about the gospel. Some people believe I teach a false gospel. Okay. I have an open door policy. Let's talk about the true plan of salvation today. Okay. One of the biggest things with the gospel that I deal with people is the Romans road to hell. We've got to avoid the book of Romans. We've got to avoid the book of Romans because we're going to get into Romans. The most hated chapter in Romans is Romans chapter 8. And the reason I say that is because they try to say today with the false religions out there, or the false Christianity, the easy believism, faith alone, chapter and verse where it says faith alone. In the book of Hebrews, it says, faith without works is dead, being alone. But it's the only time you see the word faith and the word alone in the same sentence, the same verse. Right? Nowhere does it say it's faith alone. Right? But I say, hey, I'll talk with you. Right? I'll talk with you. Romans 8, they always try to say there can be a carnal Christian. Or Romans chapter 8 says that there's carnally minded walking after the flesh. That's a lost person. And then they're spiritually minded, walking after the Spirit. There's a saved person. Okay, someone who's carnally minded and walking after the flesh, you know what that means? The flesh is 100% in charge. Your flesh is, is, your, is your lowercase g, God. Okay, and you walk, you are your, you know what Satan said, you can be as God's knowing good and evil. You are the final authority. You decide what's right and what's wrong, and you decide everything. You're the final authority. You're after the flesh. The flesh runs you. Okay? When you're spiritually minded, you're walking after the Spirit. God's the final authority through His perfect written Word. The Holy Spirit comes in, brings you into all truth. Sanctified thy truth, thy word is truth. The Holy Spirit brings the Word of God in, and now it's God's the final authority through His Word, and you start doing things God's way. Can you still fail? Absolutely. But just because someone who's saved fails, let's say they get into sin, or they compromise with the world, that doesn't mean they're carnally minded. Carnally minded means that the first thing on your mind is worldliness, sin and wickedness, fleshliness, worldliness. Someone who's truly saved, the first thing on my mind has never been flesh. The moment temptation comes in, this is what's in my heart and on my mind. The Holy Spirit's convicting me, my own conscience is convicting me, saying, hey, wait, 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 wait. And sometimes I, I, I give in to temptation and choose to sin, but it's not the first thing on my mind. But anyway, Romans chapter 8, really distinguish the two. They're, not, they're both not Christians. Some false teachers will get out there and say that they're both, this is talking about two types of Christians. No, it's talking about a lost person versus a saved person. There's a difference. They don't like it. They just don't like it. But I talk with somebody. I've talked with them about the gospel. But like I said, I, I grab from the Pauline epistles, and I say, this is what it says, what Paul's preaching. Bit, here he's preaching the gospel. He says this. You hear 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You divide, and you put everything together and go, this is the gospel for today. This is how you find God's grace today. Repentance, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. Now, you disagree with that? I'll talk with someone trying to show them the scripture. But after the first and second admonition, it's up to you. Okay? But I've always had an open door policy. Instead of writing like a 50, I've had some people that give me thumbs down. I got into a discussion with two people recently. And um, both, one's on Rumble, one was on uh, YouTube. The one on YouTube was hitting me up about the Bible version issue. Okay, there, you know, I prefer, and they both might have been on Rumble, but I prefer the uh, ESV. Okay, I linked all these videos for him to say, here's the Bible version issues. Here's the thing. And, I, and this is what I came back with. And this is just a set and talk. Is I told him, I don't prefer the King James Bible. Be careful when you have someone say, I prefer the King James Bible. It not, has nothing to do with my preference. I'm not the final authority. But this is Christ, you're not the final authority. The reason I say this book is perfect is I've done the study. And anybody who has a love of the truth that has actually done the study from all sides, they come to the knowledge of the truth that this is God's perfect written word. Every attack's been answered. 
where this comes from. I always do on my videos. I've got the books over there uh, where you have the Texas Receptus and then you have the Nestle's Alon. And you know, this is not over 99% gold bar. This is less than 1%. It's all worthless metal, but they coat it in less than 1% of gold. It's gold plated, but it's full of worthless metal. Now, which one do you want? It's almost solid gold versus something that has nothing and you have a debt to pay. Okay, which one are you going to go for? Well, the smart man that has the love of the truth, that actually fears God, wants, not saying you can earn salvation, but I'm talking about, we're talking about the gold bar. You have a debt to pay. Which bar are you going to choose? You still have people that reject God, who hate God, who hate His Word, and they keep choosing the Bible versions after they know the truth. But what I'm realizing is a lot of brethren out there that they might use the King James Bible ignorantly, you need to do the Bible version issue study. There's a lot of people out there that I believe are false converts. And they haven't studied the issue. You show them this, they're like, well, that's not true. Well, I've never heard that. Then how can you come and tell me that there's no perfect written word of God today in English? How can you tell me that if you haven't done the study yourself? Some claim to have, but when I throw a lot of stuff at them, information, truth, when I throw a lot of truth, the truth bomb, the facts bomb, they start going... Well, I've never heard that. Well, clearly you didn't do the study, as you claim to have done. Okay? I did a whole study. I went through a lot of different men doing the study. David Daniels, Peter Ruckman, Sam Gipp, Brian Denlinger. Okay? Uh, 33rd book. I didn't just go off, one man says it's the God's perfect written word, therefore it has to be God's perfect written word. Uh, there are some things thrown out, like James White put out some books. I even looked into some people that were fighting against the perfect written word of God. Okay? I did my study. And when you do your study and you realize where this book came from and the history of this book, the King James Bible, and you look at the history of all the other books and where they came from, and you look at all the mistakes, the whole thing is, is they don't deny all the errors and mistakes and all the Bible perversions. They just hate the idea that there's a perfect written word, a perfect standard. A perfect standard. And his thing was, is I prefer, and I said, I don't prefer, getting back on point, I don't prefer the King James Bible. I've done the study, I've gotten truly saved and born again, because I realized the plan of salvation that's in here that I just told you, repentance towards God, godly sorrow, work with repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world work at death. It happens here in the heart, having sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against God. I never came to that point. Yeah, sin is bad. Yeah, it's, I'm going to hell because of sin. I was a false convert most of my life. I never came to God broken with true biblical repentance. I was told repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. It's a change of mind. No, when God repents, it's a change of mind. When man repents, it's a sorrow of the soul. It's sorrow for sinning against God. But what they try to do is they take how God repents and, and they try to turn man into God. No, when I repent, when, man, when the Bible talks about man repenting, it's sorrow of the heart. Okay. But I was told it's just a change of mind. Uh, no. I learned that. I did the Bible version issue study in my testimony I talked about it. I, I spent months on end watching all these videos, doing the study and everything. And when I got to the point that I heard the King James Bible, the true plan of salvation out of here, it took a while to set in that, hey, I've been lied to. I've been duped by the Bible buildings and these Bible perversionists, and I had to truly come to God broken in true biblical repentance. Throwing my iniquities at the foot of the cross, giving my life, my old man, the old wicked man, giving that man to Jesus Christ on the cross. And just as Jesus was dead and buried, so was the old man. And when Jesus saved me, he rose me from the dead, and I'm, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Repentance towards God, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. Jesus is the Son of God, the body of God. When His blood was shed, it was God the Father's blood that was shed. The Bible says, feed the church of God with which He hath purchased with His own blood. It's talking about God the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, uh, 8 chapter 8, verse 1, it says, uh, maybe it's 8, 6. I think 1 Corinthians 8, 6. For there is but one capital G, God the Father. There's only one God, it's the Father. Okay? There's no God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If you disagree with me, like I said, my door's open. I'll talk with you about it. We'll go through the scriptures. 
Right? But I got it, it, it's not a preference. I know I seem to be going hardcore on this, but we need to stop having the attitude that I feel, my opinion is, my preference, I prefer. No, I've done the study, the Holy Spirit told me this is it. This is God's perfect written word. This is the final authority which you can hold me accountable for to, and I can hold you accountable to. He said two things. Anybody can quote scripture. Yes, that's true. That's true. But here's the thing. We Bible believers, when we quote scripture, we have a final authority that you can hold us accountable to. You can hold me accountable to this book, and I can hold you accountable to this book. The Bible perversion is you can't really hold you don't hold anybody accountable. We don't judge anybody, we don't hold anybody accountable. There is no final authority. Man what that means is mankind's the final authority. Each individual person is the final authority. I prefer that man was the final authority. The word of God isn't. And they always say this, brothers of Christ, they always say, um, Along the lines, well, I like the King James Bible. It's a nice translation. However, but, remember, when you say but and however, whatever you just said just gets downplayed. And the next sentence is what you really believe. But I prefer the ESV. ESV. In other words, they don't like it. They're lying. I'm sorry, they're just lying. Because if it was a great translation, why aren't you using it? If this is a good book and it's a great translation, why aren't you using it? The ESV is not a good book and it's not a great translation. Neither is the NIV, NASV, New Met, Good News for Modern Men, uh, The Message. I can go through all, all these Bible versions out there. They're not good translations. They're satanic, antichrist, spirit Bibles. This is the great translation. This is the perfect written word of God. It's not about preference. We need to get back to our stands. I'm, I, I've been going through this study, and we're going to get in a little bit more in this study. So please forgive me. But I got that response, and he just, you know, lots of information. Page up. He responded like four or five times. I didn't respond again. If he couldn't take time to watch those videos, uh, I did a like playlist of videos. If he's not going to take time to do the study for himself, not take my word for it, but if he's not going to do the study for himself, right? I, I, that's where the Bible talks about not casting pearls before swine. Neither cast, it says, you don't cast that which is holy among the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine. Why? Because if I go on, try to go toe to toe with these people with absolute truth, someone else can come along and get rended by it because they can get confused. Because you have all these people with good words and fair speeches. It's, it sounds good. But we can never, with Bible perversions, you can never say chapter and verse with them because they don't believe in the authority of the scriptures. With a Bible believer, when we have disagreements, we can say chapter and verse. When I'm wrong, show me. I've been shown where I'm wrong by brethren. Chapter and verse. We have the same authority. This right here. Not this right here. This right here. We have the same authority. That's why we can say, thus saith the Lord. That's why we can say chapter and verse. Like the Bereans, who searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. They weren't searching multiple uh, versions of the scriptures. Okay, They were searching the scriptures. At the time, it was in Hebrew. When Paul was talking about Jesus and what he went through and how it was prophesied that he'd go through what he went through, die on the cross, how he's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins. He was their Messiah. He was, you know, the Christ, the Son of the living God. They had to search the scriptures. So we can do that. When I say something, you have a perfect final authority that we both share the same foundation, that you can check it and say, is he telling the truth, or is he kind of wrong here, or is he just flat out lying? That's what they don't want. They don't want accountability. So I had to deal with that guy. And like I said, I'm always offering. If you want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. I'll Skype, we'll talk about the Bible version issue. You want to talk about the true plan of salvation. You want to talk about eternal security. You want to talk about dispensational teaching. You want to talk about um, the uh, day of Christ, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. The body of Christ leaves before the time of Jacob's trouble. You want to talk about the time of Jacob's trouble. You want to talk about the day of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Um, you want to talk about the Old Testament. I'm here. The door's open. 
another one I got, which was, it was weird, but uh, I guess he's a hardcore, die-hard Catholic Catholicism. And he was giving praise to God, Mary, as saints. I mean, he was giving praise to, you know, all these false, you know, the false Mary, because the Mary of the Catholic Church isn't the Mary of the King James Bible. Uh, the saints in the Catholic Church are just uh, false gods from the Roman paganism before it became the Catholic Church. All these false gods got uh, saints' names and everything. It's all false god worship. And I got him, and I started quoting some scripture to him, saying, hey, what you're, how you're saying things and what you're doing. He asked me, when am I on this program, like it's a program, uh, it's a Bible study channel. You know, we do Bible studies. But he asked me, when am I going to get a father or a priest on here to do some prayers and stuff like this and everything? I guess he thought I was Catholic. I don't know how you get Catholic out of this. Catholicism hates the King James Bible. It's amazing how you have people who claim that they're not Catholics, but they always seem to line up with the, with the Catholic Church on most things. The Babel buildings, the, the Bible versions. Okay, things, uh, traditions of men above the Word of God. Okay, the, uh, above the commandments. You've made the commandments of God of none effect by your traditions. They always seem to line up more with the Catholic Church than they do. But here I'm, King James Bible believer, I'm preaching the Word of God. This is the final authority. And some guy hits me up on there. It's like, he might the first time you come across my channel. But I hit him up and I showed some verses and he got angry. And he's like... Um, how do you say it? He's like, anybody can quote scripture. This is the guy that said, anybody can quote scripture. It's all about your interpretation. And when I saw him go, he went, he went, I had, on, on Rumble, you're limited. So I didn't want to do a huge thing, but you're limited to almost like a paragraph and that's all you can put down. That's about it. So I had to do two paragraph responses. And he did five responses to each paragraph, five or more. And he's just going off on me. You're the heretic. You're on your way to hell. I never said he was a heretic. I only showed the scriptures where he was wrong for the, the father thing. There's only one religious title. It's not even a religious title, but the title uh, Father, capital F Father, is reserved for God the Father, and that's it. You can have an earthly father, lowercase f father, but when they turn around and try to make it a title, a religious title, I showed in the scripture. So I showed where Mary worship is wrong. Praying to Mary, praying to, God, uh, to saints. I show where that's wrong. You only pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ. And I use scripture. And the moment the guy said, you could see his hate. He hates God's word. He hates absolute truth. And I, don't, I didn't turn him down. I didn't turn down if he offered to want to talk. But I just, I didn't, that guy was just really showing a lot of hate in his responses. And it's like... I still try to have an open door, but with him, I'd stick to the gospel. I'd stick to the Bible version issue, and I'd stick to the gospel, the true plan of salvation. And if he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Right. So I have an open door policy, brothers of Christ. If something's bugging you and you don't understand something, I might not have the answer. I might be able to point you to the answer. But my number one job, more than anything, if you come to me with questions, I'm always going to try to teach you how to study the Bible for yourselves. Okay, That's what Paul did to Timothy, to Silas, to Titus, to the men under him. He wasn't like, I'm the final authority, I'm the one with the only answers. He taught those men how to find the answers in the old scriptures. Okay, And then you, know, you have the letters today, we have both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay? He taught them how to listen to God, how to take his word, hide it in their heart, and live it. So I'll teach you guys, if I don't have the answer, I'll either teach you how to do word studies, subject studies, and expository studies. And if it's something I don't know, I add it to a list, a huge list I got on here, stuff of uh, stuff that people ask questions, and I just I don't have all the answers. And if it's something that's really important, I'll try to look and find the answer. If it's something that just gee whiz information, like it's cool, it's all important, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying there's, you know, something that's really important for your life. But ask, like, finding out in the New Testament, if you were just reading the Old Testament, were the names of those priests that were really going after Moses, you know, when he stood up against Pharaoh? Well, it wasn't that important at the time. Then we find, when you read the Old Testament, but when you get in the New Testament, it gives us their names. Okay? That's the Holy Spirit. 
But you know what I'm saying? It's just, oh, what's, what's their names? Okay, well, I'll, I'll look into it. And if I get around to it, okay, here's their names. Maybe we weren't meant to know. There's some questions like that. And then there's questions like on internal security. Well, let me show you this. Let me show you that. Or they'll ask a question that might seem like a contradiction in the Bible. But I'll pray about it for rightly dividing. Like we did um, on Thessalonians. Where it talks about one minute he's saying that, you know, that the Antichrist can't show up until the body of Christ is gone. And then it turns around and says the body of Christ can't leave until the Antichrist shows up. Okay? That sounds like a contradiction. Well, I really had to pray hard on that and say, Lord, open the scriptures to me. And we get into it, know what he's saying. And we did a teaching on this that it both happens at the same time. You can't have one without the other. When you have someone saying the, the, the catch away of the body of Christ had already happened in the past, but the man's sin hasn't been revealed, that's a lie. This over here is a lie. The body of Christ hasn't been caught up. When you have someone say that the, the man of sin is going to be revealed, but the body of Christ doesn't get caught up, that's a lie. That's a total lie. That's what Paul was saying. Sometimes you've got to pray over it, and we've got to get the answers to... i got to study it and pray. Always pray. And then God will give us the answers. Sometimes I need help. So I'll point you in the right direction. There's other men of God out there. It's sad that a lot of the brethren are becoming like one man shows. It just seems like we're all going into every man for himself, every man for himself. I'll try to point you in, the, in good Bible study. I might disagree with Peter Ruffin here, but he has a great video here that will answer your question. And it's amazing. Okay, it's truth. Uh, I might disagree with they, uh, Brian Denglinger over here, but here's a video that back when he's in a standing position, that he's preaching absolute truth. It'll answer your question. I will. I have no problem pointing people in the right direction because I don't want to be the one with all the answers because I don't want worship of men. Okay? But I also... Some men have been able to teach it a lot better than me. <laughs> you know. So that being said... Okay, I'm always open to talk. I have an open door policy. But I've had to deal with some guys recently, and it's like, I'm getting tired. I don't want to get lazy. I'm starting to get a little lazy. Lord, I pray, Lord, don't let me get lazy. Let me take second, first and second admonition. Let me take time to try to correct them. Let me take time to try to preach the truth to them. And then if they don't want the truth. There's some men out there in ministry that they've gotten hard-hearted, very prideful, uh, and they've gotten very bitter. That bitterness that turns to anger and hate. And they have a lot of hate for the lost world. They have a lot of hate for the brethren. They won't take time out to do first and second admonition. They'll just kick someone to the curb or just ignore them. Uh, we're, we're put down here to preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Even if you're being attacked. There's times in my walk when I got into ministry, just part-time ministry, uh, where doing little Bible studies, that there's times where I get a lot of exhortation in season. And there's times where I wasn't hardly getting any exhortation and I'm getting a lot of attacks out of season. We're still supposed to preach the word. And like I said, the Bible says first and second admonition, then you need to give a first and second admonition. Uh, this, moving on, moving on, enough talk, moving on. I got this in the mail in the ministry P.O. box. And I haven't gone through it yet, but I thought it was pretty neat. Okay. I got bookmarks. It's, it's a hymnal. Someone sent me a hymnal. I didn't order it. So some brother or sister in Christ, praise God, I'll go through it. Uh -huh. Like I said, I'll go through it. Hopefully it's not like a Mormon thing. <laughs> it's like a Mormon hymnal or something. It says psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Okay, it's from MP Melody Publications. I got some old hymnals. This looks like a newer hymnal, like a more today hymnal. It could still be an old-fashioned hymnal, hymnal. But what I've had to do with, with hymns, Brothers of Christ, I have to go through them and check them out. Okay, Sweet Affliction. Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Hopefully it's not a Jehovah's Witness more uh, one, but... Uh, God lead us along. They said the words we've gone through some, we've gone through one or two, I think, of old hymns that I like. But when you start going through it, you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't quite line up with Scripture. They're mesh, some hymns are meshing the kingdom of heaven with the kingdom of God, uh, the time of the Gentiles, 
they're meshing the time of Jacob's trouble, they're meshing the day of the Lord, they're meshing everything together, and they're singing this great hymn that sounds great, but are we singing something that's not for today? Man. My biggest thing about hymns, more than anything, and I'll get into this a little bit more, is, you know, I'm grateful. It's a gift to the ministry. I'm grateful. I'll go through it even more. This Direction for Seeing by John Wesley. So this might be a Methodist. Uh, a hymnal. My problem with hymns today, and I like changing them up a little bit, not changing the words as far as the meaning, but I like to change the words when it comes to, who am I singing to? Am I singing to a crowd down here? Am I singing to my brothers and sisters in Christ? Or am I singing to God? That's what the Psalms were about. When you read the Psalms, it's, it's King David's praying to God, singing to God, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Thou will not leave my soul in hell. He's singing to God personally, one on one. Thou, thee, you, O Lord. For thou, O Lord, art my rock and my salvation. Okay? He's singing to God. That's what praise is supposed to be for. That's what uh, psalms, hymns and psalms are supposed to be about praying to God. But a lot of the hymns that I was raised on, a lot of them are worldly hymns, had no basis in Scripture. But even some of the ones that were supposed to be for Bible-believing Bible buildings, <laughs> church buildings, Bible buildings, they're still about putting on a show. We're singing to each other. And that's not what psalms are supposed to be about. Psalms are supposed to be about singing to God. So I'll change the word from we, we love the Lord. No, I love the Lord. You are so great all the time. <laughs> I don't know that song, but I think you know the hymn. But, you know, I, I change things to make it personal. I don't change the, 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 the point of the hymn, but I make it personal. I'm singing to the Lord. I'm singing one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. And that's what I suggest you guys do. Make it personal. The music is so more important, unless you're getting into what's called an emote music, emotional music, that's the style of music and how it's done is meant to invoke a fleshly response and get you all worked up, either emotionally or you know, still physically, but it gets you worked up physically, whether it's getting you pumped up to want to fight or get you... You know, very emotional. Oh, I'm just so emotional. I just get teary-eyed. Uh, true worship is peaceful. True worship of God is something that's peaceful. It's something that 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 means something to you, and it's personal between you and God, and it gives you peace to sing to God. When when King David is singing, "Take not thy Holy Spirit from me," he wasn't all teary-eyed and falling apart. He was praising God and trusting God. Lord, I can lose the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, don't take it from me. Now, you know King David. He did a couple things that deserve taking the Holy Spirit. Okay? He committed adultery and had a man murdered. Okay? He was praying to God. He was pleading with his heart when he's praying or singing hymns. He's pleading with his heart. Right, there's nothing wrong with making a plea, but a lot of this emotion music that I was raised on in the Babel buildings is a false convert. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank for the ministry. I'm going to check out some more. I have some books of John Wesley. There were some thing, areas where he was in error, and um, some areas where he was right on with the book. Right on with the book. So I'll check it. I just wanted to thank whoever sent it, because there was no note, no nothing. It's just like they bought it from the store and had it delivered <laughs> to the P.O. Box, the ministry P.O. Box. So, uh, lastly, well, it's not last, this is going to be last, but next on the list is the Bibles that I sent off. We got 10 Bibles out in the last 30 days. Praise God. Uh, there's nobody here. I'd be like, can I get a praise God? You don't know how hard it was. I Normally it's easy, but I, the first six books, I got, I got the box in of Bibles, put all the new information on, went to the post office, Gave him the paperwork. Everything went through. It was great. I gave it to him. And I came home and gave the routing number to the, the brethren over in Belgium. And then within, I was so blessed, within like an hour or two that evening, they'd gotten it somehow right away. And it was just the timing was right. God is a, he does amazing things, a miracle. 
the timing was just right with the time difference that she, the, the sister in Christ had checked it. And she came back real quick and said, hey, they put down the address wrong and we talked to the post office here and they won't let us have it. It's going to take a month to get over there and then another month to come back because they'll ship the postage back and we'll have to do this all over again. And I started getting a little bit fearful too and I was like, I could have sworn I did right because I make mistakes. I was fearful. I screwed up because I'm, my handwriting, I sh like my hands shake. We talked about that with the walk and talk. I've got a, this set up here for the walk and talk that's supposed to hold it just right and it's supposed to keep it from uh, uh, keep it steady her, her, horizontal and doesn't make it shake and everything and last time we tried I, I think the battery might not have been fully charged so this time next time we try to do a walk and talk but my hands shake so when I try to write out I write slow but it still comes out uh, you know hard to read sometimes so I was scared that I, I, I made a mistake. So I prayed hardcore, Brothers of Christ, and I got, I know you guys were praying for me for the Bibles, getting them over there. So the next morning, I rushed to the post office to talk to them. I took the paperwork that I had, I keep it, and I took it to them and said, listen, I just got news, and I, I actually printed out everything they said. And I said, this is what they're saying, and here's the paperwork that I turned in. I looked at the paperwork, it has the proper address, but I, I messed up a little bit on the box, and I didn't finish it, but they actually didn't write it properly according to the box. Okay, I left a little part out, which it still might have gotten to them, even though I left out a few letters at the very end. But I, I raced there, I started talking to them. She went to, oh, I don't know, it could still be here. And they went and hunted down the package. Praise God, they found the package. I was being as nice as I could and said I wasn't blaming them. I, I, I just apologized, my hand shakes. And, and they, they get to the point where they know me, because it seems like every month, praise God, we're getting brethren overseas Bibles. They want King James Bibles. They can't get them in these countries. We're getting them Bibles, praise God. And it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good ministry to have, to give brethren the Bibles that they want. Good Bibles that will last a long time. And... Um, so we were able to get it done. She looked up and said, okay, what we're going to have to do is refund this. What we did is had to do the process all over. So I had to sit there and write it out by hand all over again. And I have a paper that I have that I printed out everything where it's nice and neat. So I actually showed that to him and said, okay, I wrote it here, but this is the proper writing. This is the proper spelling. You can understand this and everything and walk her through it. And then it was like... Uh, and then I got kind of, you know, sidetracked. I was like, I, uh, it was a blessing. So we got the package back out. They just, they emailed me a couple days ago saying it came in through customs. They paid the fee. They're waiting for it to pass customs so they can take it and pick it up. And they might have already picked it up, the six Bibles. But then the four Bibles, because there's ten Bibles total. The four Bibles. When, when you start panicking, you don't think straight. I started panicking and I looked on here, for some reason I missed it, I checked my bank account statement and I'm looking to see where those four Bibles are, I couldn't find those four Bibles, evidently I deleted, I thought I deleted this, the emails that I got for the six Bibles, but I ended up e deleting all the emails for both the four and the six. So I started panicking and I went and ordered the four Bibles all over again, thinking that it didn't go through, and the next thing you know I got two sets of four Bibles. So I called them and I got scared because then I get a package in the mail that day that I ordered it. I got the package in the mail. So I'm, hey, go get the mail. So I went down there, picked up the package. I said, what is this? And it's the four Bibles that I had already purchased. So it did go through. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be very broke this month because <laughs> of four Bibles. And I just, I, I talked to the church Bible publishers. It's in Texas. There's two of them. I don't know where the other one is, but you have local church Bible publishers and then you have church Bible publishers. And um, so I called them, I left a message. I emailed them to the website and left a couple messages on both. And it was on a Friday, and evidently they took Friday off. So come Monday, he calls me at 5-something, almost 6 in the morning here. And it woke me up, and since it was so early, it was like, I, I let it go to the answering machine. And because I get a lot of telemarketers, and there's a certain person that likes to call me drunk or high. Um... Uh, every so often and I, I just don't answer the phone at night or like if it's very early it's not during normal what we consider normal business hours I mean it could have been a family member with an emergency that's why I, I, I walked I laid in bed and was like I'm not gonna go in there but then I was like what if it's a family member what if it's an emergency 
So I walked in here to hear the answer machine just as it closed. So I had to play the message. It was him. So I'm talking. To, I had to call him back ASAP. And I talked with him. It was such a blessing talking with the man. And he was asking questions about what I do for the Lord as well as getting the Bible situation done. And I was able to get a refund for those second four Bibles. And I told him, I said, I'll probably buy more Bibles. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to get more Bibles as, as, as they come in wanting Bibles. I'm going to get people Bibles. But like I said, these 10 Bibles, these last 30 days, it's been a little bit extra stress that trying to get, get these Bibles out. Could have been, you know, an attack, you know, spiritual attack, or just God's testing me that, you know, stay faithful, keep praying, keep working hard, but keep praying and keep trying to make this stuff happen. So that being said, I want to thank all the brothers and sisters of Christ out there that pray for this, I say this ministry, but God's ministry, my usefulness in the ministry, uh, mainly the Bibles, getting Bibles in people's hands. I, I'm all for Bible preaching. I, I want Bible preaching. I want Bible teaching. But in these last days, when it's hard to find good Bible preaching, whether it's online or you can't really trust the Babel buildings anymore, with good Bible preaching, solid Bible preaching, then uh, the next best thing is just to get the Word of God in people's hands. Get them saved. Get the Word of God in their hands. And let the Holy Spirit take it from there. Okay, He'll lead them to good men of God that can start them. Teach them how to use the Bible, read the Bible, teach them how to study the Bible, and then from there the Holy Spirit can pick up and you go, go, go. So I want to thank the brethren. It's been stressful these last 30 days to get these Bibles out. I mailed the four Bibles out. The four Bibles should be showing up sometime. Uh, today's Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday. We're going to come out with the study, the heart, love the God, the God, Lord God, with all your heart. And Sometime next week, they should receive those Bibles sometime next week. If nothing goes wrong, keep praying, brothers of Christ. Please keep praying for the Bibles that are going overseas. Um, and praying for this ministry as a whole. Now, I don't want to end this. It's just a set and talk. I don't mean for it to be long. Please forgive me. But I just don't want to end this with me talking. Okay? I want to get in the Scriptures. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3. A little set and talk. I know we talked about the Scriptures a little bit, but really get in there. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 3. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 3. Sorry, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth even as a father, the son, in whom he delighteth. You say, well, why are you reading that? Jump down to verse 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear. Neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. I want to contrast this with two things. Brothers of Christ, sometimes bad things happen to us. We're having to deal. Our focus should be on our walk with the Lord and the mission. Living a life of Christ. Being a living witness and a verbal witness. And yes, there's times we have to deal with things in our lives that have to do with war, like the, dealing with the world. Dealing with this wicked body of flesh. And there's times where we go through hard times because God is trying to punish us to get us back on the right path. But there's some times that this wicked world, don't remember we're not given a spirit of fear. Pardon me. We're not given a spirit of fear, but of, of love, peace, uh, love and a sound mind. I think it's peace, love and a sound mind. Please forgive me if I got one of those wrong. Um, but we're not given a spirit of fear. So there's times where you might go through some hard times based off what the world's doing. And they're always going to fight one another. They're fighting over the love of money, the root of all evil, uh, control, power, the right to sin. That's the biggest one. The right to sin. You know? And the more money you have, the more sin you can have. You know? That's the whole thing about the love of money. Why is it the root of all evil? Because it always seems to lead to sin and wickedness. It's always behind uh, making lots of money, but also why people want to have a lot of money. Okay, uh, I'm talking about you know these you know millionaires, billionaires, trillionaires. I don't know if there's a trillionaire out there, but please be careful, brother says Christ, and don't get too distracted by what's going on out there. Okay, the ministry. Like I said, we just talked about the ministry. You know, I have open door policy. Uh, you know, the thumbs up, thumbs down. Please do a little. 
leave a little message to exhort me or to correct me. If you're someone who just thinks I'm a heretic and I'm lost and you disagree and you're going to take time to watch the video or you're going to take time to go to the channel just to put a thumbs down and not watch the video, if you're still going to take time to put a thumbs down, take time to leave a message. Why you think I'm a heretic, okay? Uh, you can do it in an email to the ministry. You can do a little sentence in the comment section. You want to talk? My whole thing is, I'm here. You want to talk? Let's talk. Let's talk about the Word of God. Stick to the ministry of reconciliation, brothers of Christ. Stick to your walk with the Lord, being a light to this dark world. Don't get too distracted by the world. And if God is punishing you, <laughs> you know, He's punished me. He's doing it because He loves us and He's trying to get us back on the right track. If God uses brethren to correct one another, that's a good thing, okay? To get us back on the right path, the good path, to pleasing God, to living right. That's where the true peace is. I've, I've said this before, Brother Jesus Christ, that when I don't have good peace in my life, when I start losing, I get distracted. I take my eyes off Jesus Christ, I put it on the world. I start, like with the Bible package, I start uh, getting stressed out. Uh, and it took me a second, I had to go... Lord, I need your help. I had to take time out to pray. I prayed as I drove to the... I was praying the whole way, driving from here, and it's like six minutes into town, and then another five few minutes getting through town. And I was praying as I walked up to the counter. There was nobody there, praise God. So I was able to walk up and say, I've got a problem, okay? And I need some help. And, you know, there's times where we got to take a deep breath. We need to pray, and we need to trust God. Why? Take it back, chapter 3, take it back to verse 5. One of my favorite verses in Proverbs. Okay. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. We're going to do the study here, the heart. How you love God with all your heart? It starts with trust. Trust in God's word. To, if you're going to put it in your heart, hide God's word in your heart and live it, you got to trust God. He knows He is God. He's perfect. He knows what He's doing. You don't just say you trust God. You trust God with all thy heart. Remember what we said? When you hide God's word in your heart, the evidence is you're living it. When you're trusting in the Lord with all thy heart, does your life show that you trust the Lord or are you getting distracted by the world? Start getting fearful of the world. Start letting that lowercase uh, S spirit of the world, that fear, that spirit of fear, the, the, the spirit of the world come in. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. There's times where when we doubt, or we start to lose that peace and that joy, it's because something's going on in our life, whether it's chastening of the Lord, or whether we're just having to deal with being uh, beside these wicked world, where God is dealing with this wicked world, and we're here to go through what they're going through to be a light to them, to shine to them, to say, this is how you get saved, this is how you get born again, this is the right way to do things, you're not doing things the right way, to lead them to Christ. Okay? We might not understand what's going on 100%, but above all, when I don't understand, we talked about this with the Scriptures, when there's things I don't get with the Scriptures, I, I turn to God. When things are going on in my life that just, out of the blue, things seem to be falling apart, or this doesn't seem to be working... You take it to God in prayer, but always, brothers and sisters, trust God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. That's part one. I know there's a period there, but there's two parts to this. Verse six, like I said, how do you trust the Lord with all your heart? The evidence is the life that you live. Do you trust God in his word? Or are you starting to backpedal? Verse six, in all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Brother says Christ, trust the Lord with the life that you're living. Trust this. Make sure you're hiding this in your heart, and you're living it. Don't get distracted by what's going on in the world. Talking about World War III, talking about a civil war. They were talking about... I've noticed that these things could happen if God wants them to happen. Absolutely. Nothing. Some of the brethren have forgotten that. Some men of God, they know who they are, have forgotten that nothing can happen without God's permission. God is still in charge. And they've forgotten that. They think the world's in charge, and now they're being preppers. God is still in charge. It won't happen without God's permission. But we need, I remember 
there was a time where watching the news it was like, we're going to have a huge economic collapse two, three years ago. I think it was three years ago. Didn't happen. It might still happen. Eventually it'll happen. But I'm talking about it might not happen until after we leave. Here's praying and, and hoping. But it might happen when we're still here before we leave. But it hasn't happened. But they're putting that fear out there for three. Imagine living in fear that the economy is going to collapse. So you start storing up everything hardcore thinking that the end of the world's going to happen. Imagine living in fear like that. I couldn't do that. I trust the Lord. I stock up on food for about a year's worth of food. But that's just because I'm getting into canning and jarring. I call it canning, but it's jarring. Um, the meat and vegetables and putting stuff up like they used to. They, You'd have the harvest. You'd jar everything you could. You'd dry everything you could. And that would get you all the way through the next year, all the way through to the next harvest. So you'd have a year's worth of food. And you keep praying for that next year to be a good harvest, Lord, because you've gotten us through this year, Lord. Get us through next year. And you're praying and you're trusting God. You know, in all thy ways, acknowledge Him. Lord, you're in charge. Show me what you want with me. Despite what's going on out there, like I said, the economic collapse, fear-mongering. World War III, fear-mongering. Uh, Civil War, fear-mongering. Okay, everything that's going out there with the sodomite agenda and the feminist agenda, America's gone. Okay, it's gone. Real, the America that was founded by our founding fathers that knew this book for the most part and tried to base this country off this book, doing things God's way, everything has changed to go against this book now. Our government, the way our country is, how things are run, it goes against this book. There's no bringing America back. There, there is no God bless America. So why are we still here? To be a light to this dark world. Trust the Lord. Acknowledge Him in all thy ways. Lord, I'm going to just live for you, and I'm going to let you take care of the world. Whether World War III happens or not, God's got it handled. Whether there's a huge economic collapse, God's got it handled. The Sodomites go crazy, God's got it handled. We need to focus on acknowledging Him in all our ways. We need to start just worry about living for Jesus Christ every day. And doing what's right. Make sure your home's a Bible-believing, God-fearing home. Make sure you're a light to the dark world, preaching truth when God opens doors to preach the gospel, gospel tracting. Make sure you're living for Jesus Christ every day, no matter what's going on in the world. Don't get distracted by what's going on in the world that you stop living for Jesus Christ. Don't let this world get you to take your eyes off Jesus Christ. Remember, looking for that blessed hope? What's that blessed hope? Jesus Christ. Jesus coming in the clouds to call us home. That's that blessed hope. We're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ every day. We're supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Please, brothers and Christ, don't get so distracted. There's brethren in ministry that have forgotten that and they're getting distracted. They've forgotten. They've turned their back on looking present tense for that blessed hope. They'll say that they still believe. They say that they love the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, but they don't. Their actions, their deeds say I'm post-trib, yet their words say, oh, I'm still, you know, day of Christ believer, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch me the body of Christ believer. But their actions say I'm a post-tribber. I'm living every day in fear like I'm going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't be like that, brother, says Christ. I'm not saying just sit there and twiddle your fingers and don't do nothing, but I'm saying keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Don't give in to the distractions and fear-mongering of this world. God will deal with this world. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. God's dealing with the world. Let God deal with the world. Okay. So we're going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your exhortation. Thank you for your correction when it's needed. And mainly, thank you for loving your brother in Christ. Thank you, brother and sister Christ. So, I will see you in the next Bible study, which I'll get out tomorrow. So.